Today we're going to be making a 90s remix of one of our most favorite nostalgic meals of the decade. A 90s TV dinner. Hey y'all, welcome to Fail Proof Kitchen. My name is Jenna Fail. And I'm Chef Robbie Jester, winner of Guy's Grocery Games, Beat Bobby Flay, and Pressure Cooker on Netflix. I think I used to come home from school and we would watch Supermarket Sweep. We would have a TV dinner, which we have an authentic TV dinner right here. <laughs> from the 90s. <laughs> it is not from the 90s. It fed us all, it kept us alive. We're here today because of them. And today we're gonna learn how to make it a little bit better while still enjoying that favorite comfort food. I do think that there's a lot of us though that have comforting memories of Absolutely. TV dinners. Back before we knew what tasted good, what didn't taste good. We were eating corn mixed with a little brownie that spilled over the side. Man, we were glad That's to have right. it. So let's get this bad boy open. Mm -mm. Yeah. Contain yourself, Robbie. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's jelly. Yep. No. It sure is. Oh, it's gray and oh, jelly. Oh, yeah. It's a little, it's a little, thin, a little thawed out on the bottom. I will tell you, I haven't seen one of these. Robbie, no, you're not. Oh, no. <laughs> I quit. Tastes like I remember it. <laughs> All right, hang on. I'm not going to take a bite of the jelly, but I will do a little dot. I hate it. <laughs> That's not for me, Robbie. We're going to ditch this, and we're going to show you how to make a macro-friendly, delicious version of this. This one we have is Salisbury steak. So we are going to make Salisbury steak because if you've watched previous episodes, we've been kind of building to this. We have our patties. We have our delicious yogurt mashed potatoes. We're going to throw it all together in a Salisbury steak that you can make at home in minutes. First things first, Jenna, if you could take the green beans, toss them in a little bowl, a little oil, salt, and pepper. I'm good with it. So we're going to go in the oven with that at 350 degrees, probably take about 15 minutes. The beautiful thing about roasting green beans is we're going to maintain that beautiful green color. All of the, the nutrients and all the good stuff in that green bean is going to be maintained in that roasting process. You're not going to lose it to the water by boiling those green beans. Nothing wrong with boiled green beans. I love boiled green beans. I do too. Yep. I ate them out of a can growing up. It's what my mom did. And Still love those, but we're going to go onto a sheet tray. We're going to spread them out. We're going to go into the oven with those. Then we're going to talk about our Salisbury steak. So normally Salisbury steak, for those of you that may have never had this delicacy, <laughs> Salisbury steak is gonna be basically a hamburger patty, traditionally grilled and then finished in gravy. We're gonna do it on the stove top in our saute pan here. So if you wanna go ahead and patty that up. So this is a mix on a previous episode, 80, 20 ground beef, shallots, garlic, salt, pepper, oil. It's exactly what we use for our burger wrap. It makes a delicious burger, but we're gonna use this now for our Salisbury steak patties. Like a hamburger patty we're thinking? Yep. No pressure. I, when you look at me, I was it, like, I can't it, do anything. It looks, I mean, it looks, it looks perfect. Yeah? Yep. Just like you. Aww. We have just a little left over. We're doing two? Yep, we're gonna do two. We've got two in our tray here. We're gonna try and get as close to that as we can. <laughs> I hope we succeed. <laughs> <laughs> so for this particular dish, in previous episodes, I've seared on real high heat. For this one, we wanna start with like medium high. Notice it's not like crackling like you've seen me do before. And the reason for that is I want this to cook all the way through and I wanna develop some nice flavor on the pan. So we're just letting our Salisbury steak cook right now. We do wanna season it with a little bit of salt and pepper. If you could do that for me, Jenna, I'm just gonna take a little peeky peek. We want to get beautiful caramelization on the bottom of our Salisbury steak. The question is, how old were you in the 90s? <laughs> Notice it's the question that she asks me, not me asking her. In the 90s, I was between 5 and 10. We're not, we're not that far in, in age. I was born in 91, so... I think we had the best toys in the 90s. I think pop culture was actually fun in the 90s. Not a fan yes. now, but it was a really fun time. And then I remember, you know, fashion in the 90s. Yes. There are pieces of it coming back. You know, I remember. I like it. My first crush had, you know, was rocking a scrunchie. Yep. And I think, I feel like scrunchies are coming back. You know what? Mine had a bowl cut and those are coming back. Yeah. Yeah, those mullets and those wild little broccoli tops, I think they're calling them. Yep. So we got some beautiful color on our steaks, if you will. Now we're gonna just strain off some of our fat here. We've accumulated quite a bit. And now we're gonna go in with a little bit of beef stock. 
Were you a 90s pop fan or grunge? I was pop. Yeah? I was definitely pop. Uh, my first crush was, and the first album I ever bought was Mariah Carey. Ah. I thought Mariah was the hottest woman on the planet. Yeah, I love Mariah Carey, Whitney Houston, Michael Jackson. It was more like a pop, R&B, then I, you know. We are polar opposites, Robbie. You were grunge oh, when yeah. you were two? Yeah. yeah, I came out that way. No, we were definitely raised on all, on all the Halleck and Nirvana, just that good 90s grunge. I loved some uh, Nirvana. I wanted to be a Spice Girl though, so I did have a weird, I was like doing you both like, things. You were like Spicy Spice. Yeah, I was like grungy in my platform boots. So we're gonna add in a little bit of tomato paste. It's gonna give us some body, some thickness, and a little bit of roundness to that beef stock. It's just gonna add a little bit more to it. So we're reducing that beef stock. This is gonna let that stock kind of thicken some without us adding a bunch of thickeners, adding a roux or anything like yeah. that. You see, like it already started to thicken almost immediately. I would have never thought to add that, so. We're gonna go ahead and flip these back over. And we're gonna kind of go back and forth a little bit just to make sure that our Salisbury steak is cooked all the way through. Give it a little shake. Now we are gonna do a little process that as chefs we call monte a burr or mounting with butter. So we have some cold butter here. I like to always use the Irish brands of butter. I just think that they're a better product. We're gonna cut off a couple pieces here and we're gonna go in with our cold butter. And what we're gonna do, and this is definitely like a restaurant trick. You see this in restaurants. We're just gonna swirl this. And as we swirl it, that cold butter actually continues to thicken that sauce. Adds a little bit of richness to it because we've got like some acidity in there with the tomato paste and everything like that. I was always under the impression it was definitely had to be flour or cornstarch or something. Doesn't added have to, to be. It. If you have good technique, you can thicken it other ways. We're getting close. You're getting close. <laughs> We're getting close. <laughs> a little comparison there. So we have our heat off. We're just going to let that rest and continue to cook. Now we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna grab ourselves a plate, we're gonna check on our green beans, and then we're gonna get plating. No, oh, I got some fucking electric slide. You gotta know it. It's electric. Our Salisbury steak is done, our green beans are out of the oven, our delicious TV dinner is out of the microwave, as we would call it. It's, or microondo, sorry, that's, that's the proper Spanish for it. But it is out, we're ready to go. So we're gonna plate our Salisbury steak. So if you wanna help me out, you can give me a little uh, spoon of some mashed potatoes there. On the left-hand side, we wanna get we'll a direct, direct comparison. Teach you a little trick. So you take the, the spoon, yeah, little, little ridges like that. Your gravy and everything would go right okay. in there. We're gonna take our... Not an ad. Not an ad, <laughs> not an ad. We're gonna take our Power Pro double chocolate. This is what we're gonna use as our brownie here. It's 15 grams of protein in a brownie. So you're getting a huge boost in protein here. Very go macro right friendly there. dessert. Now we're gonna come in with our green beans, our roasted green beans. Now we're gonna go on with our Salisbury steak. One of them right there. Normally, I would not plate this side by side, but we're going for a direct <laughs> comparison here. My word. That looks really good. Yes. Well, I think that we're... Uh, we nailed it. We're we nailed it. I think we're ready to get down, taste it, See what it's all about. I think I'm gonna start old school. You go in there? Yep. Mm. Robbie, I don't know. I think I'm gonna scrape gravy off mine. <laughs> this is not appealing to me today. I don't know if I've ever had this particular one. I was more of a chicken nugget, TV dinner eater. <laughs> it's like the ghost of mashed potatoes past. <laughs> it's like it thought about. Yep. We don't mash it inside it. I don't wanna do that anymore. Green beans are oddly sweet. Ooh, there is sugar in there. Yes, uh -huh. there is. There sure is. I think they fixed the brownie. It is actually cooked. Mm. You know, I don't hate that. I don't either. Yeah. All right. A little chewy. Oh, uh, it's so juicy. It's a mashed Salisbury steak brought to you by Jenna Fail. Mm. Mm. I like to do mashed potatoes with a bite. Mm. That's good. Mm. 
Wow. I'm in. All of that just tastes real, and all of that just tastes very not real. Imposter. Yep. <laughs> it is an imposter. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. If you enjoyed this little walk down memory lane with us, be sure to like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications. We will see you on the next episode.